This video has been requested many times, so today I'm going to show you how to homebrew your Wii U for the Aroma custom firmware. And we'll be using the brand new exploit for 2024 called DNS Presso. Now this is also known as jailbreaking. It is legal, so nothing to worry about there, and it will unlock the full potential of your Wii U. This guide is going to show you how to install Aroma custom firmware, protect your Wii U from bricks by backing up your NAND and blocking updates, install homebrew apps and plugins directly on your Wii U with the homebrew app store, how to back up your Wii U games, and how to install content to your Wii U including our backed up games. This video is for the latest versions of the Wii U 5.5.6 and if you're in Europe the latest version is 5.5.5 but it works for both. So here is what you need for this guide. You need a Wii U of course and it does need to be able to connect to the internet. You will need an SD card. I'm using this 32 gigabyte micro SD card with an adapter. It will need to be formatted as FAT32, but we'll talk about that later. Make sure that the small plastic tab on your SD card is pushed up. Otherwise, it will cause issues with the guide. And you'll also need a computer or some way to get files onto the SD card. My computer doesn't have an SD port, so I have this USB SD card adapter here. Everything I am using will be linked down below if you want to get it for yourself. Unfortunately, the USB drives cannot be used to homebrew the Wii U, but they can be used for adding extra storage for your games. But you do need an SD card in order to homebrew it. But anyways, let's get started. So I will have a Google Doc linked down below, so click on it and it should bring you to this FS47 Aroma Wii U modding guide. First thing you should notice is there is a disclaimer. This video is for educational purposes only. If you do decide to follow this guide, you are following at your own risk and I suggest you watch the video through once fully before starting. That way you'll get a better idea of how everything works. There will be no mention or instructions on obtaining software illegally in this video. As always, since this is a video guide, make sure to read the description and the pinned comment to ensure this guide is up to date before starting. But with that out of the way, first step is to format your SD card to FAT32. So go ahead, plug your SD card into your computer, pull it on up, and we're gonna see if it is FAT32. So we're gonna click on it. Mine is in USB drive F. That's just because it's in a USB drive SD card adapter. I'm gonna right click and go to properties. So as you can see, mine is formatted to FAT32 already. If yours is not, and it's 32 gigabytes or lower, you can use Windows to do it. So right click on the drive, you can hit format, and you can format it this way. Make sure the allocation unit size is 32 kilobytes. When you format your device, it will wipe everything. So if you have anything you don't want to lose on it, make sure you back it up. Then you can put that stuff back on if you'd like. If yours is larger than 32 gigabytes, you need to use a different program. So back on the dock, you'll see FAT32 format. Just click on it. It'll take you to this page where you can download this FAT32 format program by clicking the image. You can run it and it'll open up a program that will allow you to do it. Make sure you know which drive letter your SD card is in. Mine is drive F. That does not mean yours is also drive F. It may be different. To check, go to your SD card and in the top, it should have the letter right here. Make sure the allocation unit size is 32 and then you can go ahead and format it that way. When you format your device, it will wipe everything. So if you have anything you don't wanna lose on it, Make sure you back it up. But once you have it formatted as FAT32, you can head back over to the dock and we'll get started with the downloads. Now there are a lot of downloads, so I will go slow and hopefully you can follow along. Make sure you don't miss any. So starting off with Aroma, this is the custom firmware, also known as CFW, that we're gonna be installing on our Wii U. So click on it, it'll take you to the Aroma public beta. Scroll down and just hit all these boxes. You can read up on Aroma if you'd like. It is a newer version than Tiramisu and it has much more capability. Click all the boxes and it does say Aroma will receive frequent updates, but don't worry, there is a Aroma Updater app that we will be installing and you'll be able to update it directly from your Wii U. But click all four, this page should come up. You should have everything automatically checked. Hit download payloads and then download base Aroma. And here it gives us an option to download different plugins and modules. Plugins are sort of like apps, but they are built into the software. So there's not something you can click, but there is a menu that you can configure them. For example, Blue Bear will allow you to play Bluetooth controllers. SD Caffeine is how to mod games. I will have videos in the playlist on those as well. So we won't be focusing on that in this video. But once you have payloads and base aroma, we can exit that. Now we're on to payload installer. Click on the link, click the zip file here in assets. It should download. We can exit that. Now we're going to grab the sig patches file. 
and download sigpatches.rpx. Close the page. We're going to grab payload rpx, download the payload from rpx.zip, exit that page, Wii U App Store, scroll down until you see these files and we're going to grab the app store.wub. .wubs are the app format for Aroma, so we're going to grab that one. Close it. And lastly, we're going to grab ufdyne. Go to the link. This one will allow us to block updates protecting the Wii from getting bricks. So grab the ufdyne.zip, it'll download, exit that page, and we are done. Okay, it's time to set up our SD card. I'm going to put my SD card on the right and downloads on the left. We're going to start off with the environment loader. So open up the zip file. You will need an extraction software like WinRAR or 7-zip to extract these files. If you don't know how to do that, just do a quick Google search and you should find a quick guide but open up the environment loader zip file and it should have a Wii U folder. We're gonna grab it and drag it onto the SD card. Exit the zip file. If we go inside of there, we're gonna have payloads. That's what we want. And you can delete the zip file as we no longer need it. Next up, we're gonna open the Aroma Beta 16. So open it. It's also gonna have a Wii U folder. We're gonna grab it and drag it onto the SD card and it will merge. If you're on Mac, just click merge. And now if we go inside of it, it should have apps and environments. But let's go back to the root of the SD card, exit that zip file, delete Aroma Beta 16 from our downloads, and now we're going to grab Payload Installer. It will also have a Wii U folder, <laughs> so drag it onto the SD card, it will merge, exit the zip file, delete it from your computer. So next up we'll do the SIG patches. This will just allow you to play certain games without running into issues. So on your SD card go into Wii U, Environments, Aroma modules setup and this is what you should see we're going to grab the sigpatches.rpx and drag it inside we're good to go head back to the root of your sd card where your wii u folder is we can delete the sig patches file now we're going to open up payload from rpx now there is a wii u folder but we're going to go inside grab this root.rpx and drag it onto the root of your sd card so it should be alongside the Wii U folder. We can exit that zip file, delete it from our computer. And there's one last thing we have to do for it. We're gonna right click it, rename, and call it launch. So it should look just like this, launch.rpx. Next up, open up ufdyne. There will be a Wii U folder. <laughs> Drag it onto the SD card. It'll merge. Now that is an app, and you'll see where it went in a second. Exit the zip file delete it from your computer and now we have the app store.wub so now on your SD card go into Wii U apps and that's where UF Dine went but now we are going to put app store.wub inside of there you can delete it from your computer let's go back to the root of your SD card and this is what it should look like it should look real clean just Wii U and launch.rpx also make sure you don't name your SD card Wii U as it can cause problems when running homebrew but now that we have it all set up we are ready to eject our SD card and head over onto the Wii U I'll meet you over there all right and once you're over on your Wii U we're gonna head into system settings we're gonna click on internet now we're gonna hit connect to the internet and depending on the type of connection Mine is a wired connection, so I'm going to hit connection types, but if yours is Wi-Fi, then just go through and set it up that way. But I'm selecting wired connection. Okay. As long as you have a working connection on your Wii U, you're good to go. Successful. Okay. Saved as connection one. Cool. We're going to hit connect to the internet again. Go to connections. And you should see your connection there. Now we're going to go inside this connection and we're going to change a couple settings. So go to change settings, scroll over to DNS, click on it, and we're going to change it to don't auto obtain. And we're going to change the primary DNS. Now this exploit is actually quite new. And right now the DNS settings are as followed in the video. But if there is any update to it, I will put it down below in the pinned comment. But let's change it. Click primary DNS and type in 85.215.57.182. So make sure it looks like that, press okay, and we should be good to go. Now these are currently as of January 15th, but once you have the primary DNS setting in, click confirm, click save, click save, 
And now we're gonna run a connection test. So hit connection test and we're gonna hold B. It should run through the test and then freeze partway through and then load up DNS Presso. There's the freeze and here's DNS Presso by Gary Odernitz. You can let go of B once you see this screen. It's a little bit blurry on my camera, but this part shows up on the TV, so I'm gonna switch to that quick. So use the gamepad though and go down to NAND number, press A. And here we're going to back up our NAND. If you don't know what that means, it's basically backing up your whole system storage and it will give you something to revert back to if you get a brick. Now, right now, everything is automatically checked off except for MLC. So if you go down to MLC, this is your Wii U storage. So I would suggest changing it to yes. Now it is suggested to have at least 32 gigabytes on your SD card in order to back it up, but you can try, if you don't have that much stuff on your Wii U, you can try a smaller SD card size. And there's always the option to say no for MLC. So this is gonna back up your Wii U's NAND and your virtual Wii NAND but just click A to launch and it should begin backing it up. If you can see, it is running through the NAND dumper. Now this will take a little bit, especially if you already have stuff on your Wii U. So, so let it do its thing and I'll meet you back when it's done. And once that's finished, it will restart your console. Now, just a reminder, if you did choose MLC, it will take quite a while. Mine took almost an hour, but now that we have our NAND backed up, turn off your console and we'll take the SD card out and plug it back into our PC. And we'll pull up our SD card and it should look like this. If you did not back up your MLC, you will not have those files, but I did, so they are there. That is the largest part of the NAND backup. As you can see, it filled up most of my SD card. And now to keep it safe, we're gonna place it somewhere on our computer or you can put it in your Google Drive or anywhere you can access it in case you ever need it. So I'm just gonna go on my desktop, create a new folder. I'll call it Wii U number three because it's my third one, <laughs> just to keep it organized. And we're gonna highlight every file on the root of your SD card, except launch.rpx. This also includes your VWE backup as well. But we're gonna grab these, put it into that folder that we just created. It's quite large, so it will take a little bit. And we're just about done. Once it's all transferred over, we can delete all of these files in here. Make sure you do not delete launch.rpx and that'll free up all of the extra space on your SD card without any issue because you already have the NAND backup in this spot. But once you have it in the safe place and wiped off of your SD card, let's head back onto the Wii U. So eject your SD card and plug it into your Wii U. I'll meet you over there. All right, and we're back on our Wii U. And just a reminder, we're still on stock firmware. We haven't added the Aroma firmware yet. So we're gonna head back into system settings and we're gonna run that same exploit again with the DNS settings. So head back to your connections, connect to the internet connections. You shouldn't have to create a new connection. You should be able to use the one that you used previously on the first time we did the exploit. But if you run into issues, just delete this one and create another one with those same DNS settings. So I'm just gonna go to my connection, connection test. And this time we're not pressing anything on the D-pad. We're just watching it do its thing. It should freeze shortly. And then we're gonna run into the environment loader. There we go. And there's DNS Presso. And this is what we should see. So here we're gonna click Y and that's gonna highlight Aroma with yellow. And that's gonna set it to the default environment. So click A now. And we'll get this big scary red screen. It's just saying that the update folder currently exists and it might not be blocking updates properly. Don't worry, we're gonna be fixing that later in the video. So just click A to continue. And we'll be in the boot selector Press Y on Wii U menu, it'll highlight it in yellow. Press A, and it should load into the Wii U menu, but this will be custom firmware. And there we go, we are now in Aroma custom firmware. Now the way you can tell you are for sure in it is because the apps will show up on the Wii U menu. So previously on different homebrew setups like Haxachi or Tiramisu, they will be in an actual um, app. Like Tiramisu had the Mi Maker patched with the homebrew launcher. But for Aroma, they are all on the menu. So now it's time to finalize our Aroma setup. So right now, if you turn off your Wii U and turn it back on, it will go back into stock firmware and you'll have to run the exploit again in order to get back into the Aroma. But we're gonna change that. So we're gonna go over to the right where it says payload loader installer. So click on it 
and here we're going to install the payload loader. In here just use the d-pad, you can also use a Wiimote if that's what you're using. Select A on check, and then we're going to press A on install slash update. So press A, it's just giving us a warning. It's going to patch the health and safety information app with the payload. Press A on install, it'll do its thing, and it was successfully installed. We'll press A to shut down the console, turn it back on. So we're back on and first thing you'll notice is you will not see the apps. This is because we're still in stock firmware. Now the exploit is inside of the health and safety icon. So instead of doing the DNS change, we can go into the health and safety information and load the environment loader from there. So let's get back into Aroma so we can change it to auto boot. So click on the health and safety information icon and hold X. And we're back in the environment loader. So press A on Aroma. It'll give us the same warning, press A. And we are back in Aroma. Now we're going to change it, so we're gonna head back into the payload loader installer. We're gonna press A on check. And this time we're gonna go down to boot options. Press A, and we're gonna switch it to payload loader. What this will do is when you reboot your console, it will load directly into Aroma. So press A on switch to payload loader and successfully updated. So we're gonna press A to shut down the console. And this time when we reboot it, it should load directly into the Aroma custom firmware. We'll turn it back on and we'll see if it was successful. Same warning, press A. And just like that, it loads directly into Aroma. So technically your Wii U is officially homebrewed and ready to go, but there are some final configuration things that we need to change to protect your Wii U from any updates in the future. So the first thing that we're gonna change is we're gonna go back into system settings and switch our internet connection to auto obtain DNS. We're gonna take off the numbers we added. So go back into internet, connect to the internet, connections, go to the connection that you used, go to change settings, go over to DNS, and we'll change it back to auto obtain. Press B to save. run through a connection test again, and it should be back to normal and should give us the success. Test was successful, press OK. Saved it as connection one, sure. Back, back, and let's head back to the Wii U menu. And back on the Wii U menu, you should notice this Wii U icon here with ufdyne.rpx. We're gonna load it up, and we're gonna block updates, which will take away that big red warning screen. So it's super simple, once you see this screen, just press A to delete the update folder. And you do need to use the gamepad for this, so press A on the gamepad to delete the update folder, and boom, just like that, it's deleted. As you can see, if you ever wanna get the update folder back, if Nintendo does do an update past 5.5.6, you can recreate the update folder in order for your console to update. But we're good, we want them blocked for now. Press the home button, close the software, and there is one more thing I need to show you before getting into the Homebrew App Store. So over here, you should see the Aroma Updater with the down arrow icon, so press on it. And this is the app that's gonna allow you to update your custom firmware directly on your Wii U. And it is a very simple user interface. All you do is press A to check for updates. As you can see, everything is up to date apart from not having installed the IMG loader. We don't need that. But if you wanna go to the second page, just hit the R1 button, the right bumper and you can install different plugins and modules. Same things that gave us an option on the website. So you can install those directly from here if you wish. But we'll go back, and if you do need to update, all you do is press plus and it will go through everything. So now that you know that, we'll head back to the Wii U menu. So as I mentioned, you can get the plugins from Aroma Updater, but you can also get them from the Homebrew App Store. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to access the plugin menu. So hit left bumper and hold it with down on the D-pad and minus, and you will open this plugin menu. This is where you can change the settings for any plugin you get, including SD Caffeine or Screenshot plugin, etc. All you do is select it, and then you can go into the settings and change it to however you want it. But let's go home, and now I'm going to show you how to use the Homebrew App Store. Again, this will have all your plugins for Aroma along with apps. Now, navigation is much easier on the gamepad, but you can also use your Wii Remote to go between the apps. So right now it's under all apps, but this will also include the outdated ones that were used for Haxachi and T2 
tiramisu. If you go over to Aroma Ready, you can have the apps and plugins ready for Aroma. So in the Aroma Ready option, let's go down all the way until we find the app that is one of the most important on a homebrew Wii U WUP installer GX2. As you can see in the bottom right of the icon, it says WUB. That means it's Aroma Ready. So we're gonna go on it. You can read through all of um, everything it does, but it basically installs content onto your Wii U, including games, updates, and DLC. So we're gonna hit A to download. And it'll, it'll just download directly onto your SD card. No need to take it out. And combined with that, we're gonna grab WUD, which is known as Wii U Disk Dumper. This is gonna allow us to turn a physical copy of a game into a digital copy on our SD card that we can install to our Wii U. So let's download that one as well. Press A, downloading WUD, and let's go back up a physical game into digital. Press home. So in order to back up your physical copies into digital copies, let's head over and you should see Wii U disk dumper after we installed it. So head into there. And I have Super Mario Maker for the Wii U that I'm gonna insert. So make sure the dump target has the star on SD card. And then above that, we're gonna take the arrow down to dump partition as dot app. Click A on it, it will read your disk information. As you can see, I got Super Mario Maker in there. Select the game. Notice the big long sequence of numbers. This is the title ID, and that is what the file name will most likely be on your SD card. But it'll begin dumping, and once it's done, press A to continue, and we'll meet back on the computer. And on your PC, if you open up your SD card, you should see a new folder called WooDump. Open it up, you'll see a bunch of letters, and this is just for the game. They'll be different for each game, but I suggest backing up one per time because it can get confusing. But go inside, and as you can see, I got Super Mario Maker. If we open this, this is what the actual game should look like. We can go back, we are going to right click and cut, use the scissors, head back to the root of your SD card, create a new folder, call it install, go inside, and paste. And then I also suggest going and deleting your WooDump folder. If you back up another game, it'll just get recreated, so don't worry about it. But once you've done that, we are ready to install the game with WAP Installer GX2. Let's head over to the Wii U. So we're back on the Wii U and I fully suggest getting a USB drive or an HDD like in my other video uh, so that you can install games to this instead of your NAND. So I'm just going to set this up quick on my Wii U. If you do decide to get an external hard drive, you may need a Y splitter cable to go with it to power it. And if you don't know where to look for one, I have an Amazon link in the description if you want to get it there. But anyways, let's set up that USB drive. So I just plugged it in and now it's going to give us the option to format it. Now this is something we have to do, so I'm going to click format and it will wipe everything. I have nothing on it, so we're good to go format and we're good. Press OK. And just like that, I now have 32 extra gigabytes of storage that I can install my games to. So let's head over into WAP Installer GX2 now and get Super Mario Maker installed. And this is what it looks like. You can either use the D-pad on your Wiimote or you can use the touchpad on the gamepad and just select Super Mario Maker so that there's a green check mark. Press install, press yes. It'll give you an option to install to your NAND or to a USB and I just set up a USB drive so I'm gonna do that. It is safer to install to USB or a hard drive so I would suggest setting one of those up before installing games. So I'm gonna select USB and it will begin installing the game. Almost there and successfully installed, great. So let's press A on OK, go back to the home menu and we'll check out our game. Just like that, there it is, we can play it now. And another tip, if you do want a homebrew launcher app, you can create a folder, call it homebrew launcher, press OK, and there you go. You can place all your homebrew apps inside. But there you go, you have a homebrew launcher which holds all your apps. But now your Wii U is officially fully set up. You have a game on there now, you have these apps, you have the app store, you're ready to go. All you need to do is set up your VWE now. So click the video that's popping up right now and head on over there to get your VWE modded. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button. I really appreciate all the support, but I hope to see you on the next video. And as always, stay funky and happy modding. <laughs>